Hello everyone. In this video I want to talk you through the process of apoptosis. Sometimes it said um, apoptosis even though it's a silent P but it ultimately means the same thing. It's the scientific term for programmed cell death and the key word here is programmed because that kind of implies that this is an almost inherent or inbuilt mechanism that the cell has and that is indeed the case. If the cell has reached its maximum number of divisions or if there's an error with the cell, so maybe there's a replication problem in terms of the DNA, maybe one of the organelles inside the cell is damaged, then the cell ultimately would undergo this triggered cell death. So before we come into and talk about the details of apoptosis, and I'll explain why we've got this diagram in the middle of the screen, it's important just to distinguish this from a process known as necrosis. Now, necrosis is different because when you have necrosis, what you have there is untidy, damaging death. So this is um, cellular death that usually results after trauma. You get this release of hydrolytic enzymes. And I say untidy because usually you get quite you can get an extensive damage of the surrounding tissue so it doesn't just affect one isolated cell so one key thing to say is that whilst necrosis is damaging death usually resulting after trauma apoptosis which is sometimes uh, mistaken for necrosis is different because it's programmed cell death and it's isolated just to the cell that's undergoing it and you don't get this release of hydrolytic enzymes. So let's think about this uh, picture that we have in the middle. Our starting point really is this one over here on the left. That's number one. So we're going to number that and then I'm going to just talk a bit about it. Now what we have there is a breakdown of what's called the cell cytoskeleton, which provides for support for the organelles. So we've got enzymes breaking down the cytoskeleton. And we see that the cytoplasm becomes more dense as the organelles get tightly packed. So the key thing there, if we just make a, just a small note, is they're ultimately getting breakdown. Of the cytoskeleton. So we're losing that sort of integral internal structure. Then if we follow the arrow around, we come to number two. Now what we can clearly see here is that this membrane is forming these odd protrusions or blebs, they're called. So we'll just label that there. It's called a bleb or a protrusion. And the cell membrane forms these blebs and chromatin condenses and the nuclear envelope actually starts to break down. It's not particularly obvious in this picture, but that is what would happen. Now, just to quickly say, um, if we think of just a piece of DNA like this, we just draw a typical structure of DNA, put in the usual little lines here to represent the bases. You have a strand of DNA, but that DNA is wrapped around, and it's just a very quick sketch, and I'll draw them as little green dots, wrapped around what are called histone proteins. And they provide support for the DNA. And the DNA with the histone proteins collectively is referred to cr as chromatin. So that's what I'm meaning when I say this chromatin condenses. So it condenses, you get a breakdown in the nuclear envelope, but you get the formation of these blebs. And the bleb really is the, the key sign that apoptosis is occurring. So let's look at step three over here. So in step three we can see that the DNA is broken into fragments and then the whole cell is broken into small vesicles or sacs. So what we have essentially here are small vesicles and these are actually called, if I give the proper name, these are known as apot or apoptotic bodies. So again, into a little bit of depth here, this is um, a video primarily designed for uh, Key Stage 5 students studying OCR, 
uh, biology, that's really the only time that apoptosis is done in any kind of detail. So what we've had, number three, is the breakdown of the DNA into fragments and the whole cell broken into these small vesicles, the apoptotic bodies. So we can quite clearly see, if we finish with number four, you can see that one of these vesicles is almost being engulfed by this particular cell here. And this cell we could refer to as a phagocyte. Now I have done a whole video on phagocytosis in the context of the body's defence against disease. But what we actually have are these small vesicles taken up by a process known as phagocytosis. This phagocyte, which is actually a type of white blood cell, wraps its round, it envelops around that vesicle, engulfing it. Debris is disposed of quickly, so it causes no damage to the surrounding tissue. So if we just go back to what I said before, whereas this doesn't cause damage to the surrounding tissue, necrosis does, and that's one of the key differences. So what I'd like to just move on to very quickly is just to think about what controls this whole process? So, signals from chemicals called cytokines from the immune system, but also hormones, growth factors, and also nitric oxide can all activate apoptosis. So, that's signals from chemicals known as cytokines, they come from the immune system. But also hormones, growth factors, nitric oxide, all these can trigger apoptosis. And in fact, the last one, nitric oxide, it induces apoptosis by disrupting movement of hydrogen ions in mitochondria. In a separate video, I've talked about aerobic respiration. And as part of that, key, a key stage called oxidative phosphorylation involves the movement of hydrogen ions ultimately to produce ATP. And if we disrupt that, we disrupt the whole mechanism of aerobic respiration. And as a result, we could trigger this programmed cell death. Also, proteins can be released into the cytosol, into that cytoplasm, that bind to apoptosis inhibitor proteins, allowing the process to take place. So we've had these proteins be released, but also signals from specific chemicals, Finally, let's just think about why we have apoptosis, why this is important. And ultimately, I'm just going to write this in at the bottom, because this really is the key thing to note. Why we have this whole process. It's an important part of animal and plant tissue development. It is regulated by signals to ensure the right balance of cells dividing and cells dying. So it's the right balance. Of, and this is the key part here, the right balance of cells dividing, but also cells dying. So I've not made too many notes around this video. I've just kept it kind of brief. But just if you think of an example, the best example I can think of is the immune system. Now, apoptosis helps the immune system to eradicate harmful T cells in utero. When, the, when the, the, the baby is developing, we have harmful killer T cells, type of immune cells, and apoptosis helps us destroy those. And also, another good example is the fact that it helps limbs to separate from one another. There is a, um, a condition called syndactyl, where we've got the incomplete separation of, of uh, digits like our toes, and that happens when apoptosis doesn't actually take place. One of the questions you might get in an exam on apoptosis is, what could happen if there was not enough, or maybe too much? Well, if there wasn't enough apoptosis, you'd get um, cellular proliferation and growth. That could potentially lead to a tumour. If there was too much, you could actually get wastage. With so many cells being broken down, you can start to get wastage of tissues. So there's a little bit about apoptosis or programmed cell death. Okay, hope all that helps.